welcome once again to Inside LAFC Podcast. My name is Max Bretos. LAFC getting ready for the final game of the MLS regular season, playing in very good form, looking to set the table for their best possible positioning heading into the postseason. We will talk about that. We will talk about a very productive international break for a handful of LAFC players. The best part, though, we are going to be talking to LAFC central defender Aaron Long. We will talk about being part of a good defensive squad, recovering from injuries, of which he's had a couple the last 12 months, playing for the national team and his aspirations to continue that here heading in towards 2024, and yes, playing in his hometown of L.A., what this year has been like, and he is one of those players that wasn't around in 2022. So what's it like? to play for an MLS Cup. This would be his first. It's an exciting time for Aaron Long. It's an exciting time for me. It's an exciting time for Marco over here who's doing all the film and audio for the podcast. And it's an exciting time for you. So let us begin Inside LAFC Podcast with special guest Aaron Long starts right now. Good to see everybody here joining you from the LAFC Performance Center here in Alhambra. Southern California, and are you excited? I know I am. What a run it has been. You know, we were supposed to start this season. We did at the end of February. Then the Rose Bowl game was rained out. Remember that weather back then? Well, now we're mid-October, pushing towards Halloween, and we're heading to round 34 of the MLS season. Within that, we had Campeones Cup and CONCACAF Champions League and Leagues Cup and everything. I know I'm missing U.S. Open Cup. We're going to be hitting 50 games here for the guys at some point, depending how far the uh, MLS season goes. But they are rested. They've had some days off, at least not those, uh, at least those who haven't been off on international duty. We'll let you know what those players who were on international duty did, because it was pretty cool uh, as we get into that. But now they have one game, the Vancouver Whitecaps away at BC Place, coming off two big wins that have left LAFC in second place in the West. Can't finish first, but they can finish second, which has a lot of clout behind it. It means you get home field advantage in the West with the exception of St. Louis City. If for some reason they're knocked out early, you could have a Western Conference final. I mean, feeling a little bit like 2022. Long way to go. It's going to be a very competitive postseason, but LAFC want to stay in second place. They can do that by beating Vancouver. They have beaten Vancouver already this season, and they did it convincingly. I was looking at the old record, I believe, prior to that game in CONCACAF Champions League slash Cup. Vancouver had won the last four games at BC Place, so that's been a tough place for LAFC, but they were able to wipe those away. This group of players isn't as intimidated because they know they can go there and win clean as they did in the CONCACAF Champions League quarterfinals. Win that game, they finish second. If they lose or tie that game, they could still finish second. They can only be caught by two teams. Seattle, who are in third, a point behind. They travel to St. Louis City. Keep this in mind. St. Louis City do have something to play for, and it is attached to LAFC. LAFC had the best season for an expansion team in 2018. They had 57 points. St. Louis City has 56 points. So a point, they will be level. A win, they will have the best expansion season points-wise, and they would have the best expansion season overall because they have more wins than LAFC. LAFC would have had more goals. But that's at stake. It's kind of a dilemma if you're a fan of the black and gold. You want Seattle to win so the record doesn't go away, but you want St. Louis to win to make sure you finish in second. Those games are going to be going on at the exact same time, so hopefully you have MLS Season Pass on Apple TV. I'm sure they'll break in with some coverage, but you can watch it on all your screens. It's very important. The Houston Dynamo, a little further back in fourth. Unlikely they can finish in second. They would have to win their game in Portland. Portland has a lot to play for, uh, and LAFC would have to lose their game. A tie would keep them ahead of Houston. So... It's looking very positive. I would imagine the sports books have LAFC as the odds-on favorite to finishing second, but you still want to complete it. And LAFC want to take all that momentum and put it into the postseason. 
just like they did in 2022. So there it is. One step at a time. It's an expanded playoffs. We'll talk more about that here on the podcast as well as looking forward to what we expect uh, schedule-wise because there is going to be an international break for about 10 days inside the postseason that will spread it out a fair bit. Let's talk about what the LAFC international players did because it is very exciting. I am. We're recording this on Tuesday, so some of the guys haven't played their second game of this window Kike Oliveira and Uruguay, uh, I believe are playing Brazil in the final game here. He played the whole second half for Uruguay in a comeback tie at Colombia, 2-2. This is really significant because Kike has been a revelation for LAFC, not only playing a productive level, but playing a lot of minutes immediately after arriving. Marcelo Bielsa is the head coach of Uruguay. He clearly loves Oliveira because he put him in at halftime to get a reaction. I would expect him to play against Brazil. I would expect him to play in every Uruguay qualifier uh, from this point moving forward. Brian Rodriguez started that game, and Oliveira came in for him, so another LAFC connection. That is the high point. Maxime Crepeau, maybe this is the high point, didn't play but called in for Canada, who played against Japan, uh, was on the bench. That's huge. Remember Maxime, when that injury happened at MLS Cup, he missed the World Cup. He was expected to go, but had to watch it like all the other Canadians. Now he's beginning that build back, and maybe he can make 2026 a great target for Maxime. Daniel Maldonado, uh, he was in Nations League play for Honduras, scored a goal against Cuba. I know it was Cuba. And guess what? I can say I know it was Cuba because my family's Cuban. But they're not very good at, at soccer. But he scored a goal. Uh, they have a second game coming up as they look to qualify for the next stage, uh, potentially against the United States. And our guest, Aaron Long, perhaps? We'll, we'll stick around for that. We'll get uh, into his uh, very interesting conversation shortly. But he scored a goal, so good for Daniel Maldonado. Stipe Buke played for the Croatia Under-21s. They're playing in the Euro Under-21 qualifying to qualify for that big competition. Stipe Buke played in their game. There's a second game. I don't know the details, but he's already played. And Tony Leone was with Mexico Under-23s uh, as part of their Pan American game, uh, I believe a qualifier there. So good news. You know what else is good news? I'm gonna do it. Danny Puanga didn't go to Gabon because uh, he stayed here. So he is ready and ready to go. We want him to go to Gabon. We hope he can qualify for African Cup of Nations and perhaps a World Cup down the road. But this critical stretch, for as much as he's gone, it's good to know he is here. So even though there was no games this week, and as we talked to Aaron Long here shortly, you can see they had a few days off to recharge the batteries. It's been a big story for LAFC all season. So many games where they haven't had a chance to kind of get their breath or get a full night's sleep or a full week training. They've been able to do that, and they'll be able to do that for as long as they're in the postseason because there will be gaps for them to uh, recharge. Guys are relatively healthy. Looks like we're heading into a very exciting stretch. Anything can happen in the playoffs. But uh, I have nothing bad to report. It's all good. All good for LAFC. So we will be back here on Inside LAFC Podcast. Our special guest. Aaron Long, center back for the black and gold, joins us next here on Inside LAFC. Podcast, rate, review, download, subscribe, tell a friend. Welcome back Inside LAFC Podcast, joined once again by Aaron Long, LAFC defender. You remember your first uh, visit here to the podcast? I do not. I feel like I've done a lot of interviews at this uh, courtyard area. But I don't remember actually doing this in in my head coming Maybe here today. Did. Maybe it was something else. It was my first time on this podcast. Because the one time, the one thing I know about soccer players, their memories are very, very good. You ask them to recall something on the field or off the field, and it's like this. Why do you think that is? Um, certain people, <laughs> certain people. I, I think I'm one of those people, to be honest. Um, especially if it's uh, something that I did in a game, I can remember. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Everyone's just a little bit different. I think when you care, you. You stash those those memories, especially those important memories. You stash them away somewhere so you can always call back on them, whether it's for uh, a learning experience or you know just a favorite memory or whatever it is. 
We did this. One of the it wasn't the podcast. We did something about coming back to L.A. and playing, and you were recalling things from when you were six, seven years old. I have no recollection of six or seven. Maybe I should. I don't. But you had it crystal clear. You have some. You have some core memories in there okay. somewhere. Right. We just gotta maybe get you to some therapy sessions. <laughs> like have someone bring it out of you. Not you against know? that. Not maybe against you, that. Maybe you stuff them deep down in there somewhere, but we can get them out. Yeah. Anybody for some free therapy that listens to the podcast, I'm willing to talk. Uh, <laughs> I'll do it here, but uh, I don't want to get in line of all the players. Yeah. I'm just kidding. They're all very level headed. Hey, by, talking about playing in Los Angeles, when you came back, this was your home. It's been a year. What was the perception of the reality of playing back at home? Obviously, it's a lot of positives, but is there anything that you weren't expected for? That, like guys asking you for tickets all the time? Who knows? Um, a ton of positives, and all those definitely came into fruition, whether it's, like, family life, um, the team. I couldn't have asked for a, a better group of guys, coaching staff, all that stuff. So um, on, on the positives, yeah, definitely. I think there is a couple unforeseen negatives, and tickets is kind of one, um, I would say. People come out of the woodwork um, trying to come to games. Um you know, a final or Messi's coming into town. Someone that I went to middle school with is all of a sudden like, hey, bud. Who has not asked for a ticket prior. Well, I've never even spoke to since middle school. Like, hey, man, so happy for you, dude. By the way, any uh, spare tickets for this game? You know, some stuff like that. But They would be better off just getting right to it, not saying, hey, I'm so proud. Just get right to it and say, hey, can I get some tickets? Just You'd probably respect the, the request more. Cut to the chase, you know. Cut to the chase. You go, yeah, the chase. I liked your approach. Here are four tickets in the director's box. Yeah. Uh, that didn't happen. Skybox. Just for you, man. <laughs> Uh, it's been a great run here. Uh, you guys have a few days off, and I think that's important to note because it's been a long season. You guys are going to be playing well over 50 games, depending how maybe 55, maybe, I don't know, something around those that number when it's all said and done. And now you have a chance to at least heading up to the final week of the season. There will be some gaps in the playoffs, depending how far LFC goes. Uh, how, do you feel that? How important is that for you guys? Yeah, I think, uh, and I've had Champions League seasons before, uh, with my previous teams, but I feel like, and I don't know, I'd have to check the numbers, but this is definitely the longest season with the most competitions for me. With that League's Cup in the middle, um, it just feels like it's been a long season. A ton of midweek games for us this year. Um, guys coming in and out of the lineup, battling through injuries, finals. Like it's It's been a huge year for us. So like you said, um, having this little stretch um, here to, to kind of wind down and reset work on some things in training. Uh, it's been really good for us, and, and we feel like we're ready to go. How did, That's got to be uh, refreshing. You mentioned so many guys had to fill in, <clears throat> leaned into LAFC too, and sometimes the academy to field squads in many cases. But now the club is relatively healthy, maybe very close to healthy. It's hard to gauge that. You have some guys on international duty now. But what is that like to know that you have this important stretch and you can have these full trainings, and it's – Whatever is required, I think, is at your fingertips. Yeah, I think when there's a ton of those midweek games, it's hard to train on, on things that you don't do well, right? Like you don't play well on Saturday. It's like, okay, well, we have regen and, and a day and a half to, to prepare for the next game. There's not too much training like, hey, this is what we need to work on as a group. Um, so it's been, it's been great. We've had a week, uh, a week and a half now to, to kind of all get back on the same page. Not that we weren't on the same page before, but just – um, really dive into those principles and feel like we're all on the same page. Um, and like you said, it's there's been a ton of guys that have came into the mix in a lot of these games and had to play important roles. I think it's only going to help us down the stretch in the playoffs. There's so many guys that have gotten minutes, gotten goals, um, important games. So um, everyone feels like they're a part and has contributed to this season. Um, so we're, we're in a good way right now, and uh, we just got to end strong. You are in a good way uh, with – rest you're in a good way in many other ways including results so you have two big wins feels like a while ago now since minnesota and yeah. austin but what changed with the group knowing that you needed these wins to solidify your positioning in the playoffs to secure your position in the in the playoffs and do it scoring goals and have it certainly feels like everything kind of coming together yeah i think it's that um that flip in the switch within your brain that this is uh, this is now like a playoff mentality, right? Going into these last couple of games, obviously we're not in the playoffs yet, but it feels like playoff games. Like these games have huge impacts and huge meanings as to where we stand uh, in the standings, where we're going to finish, uh, if we're getting home games or away games in the playoffs. So we kind of spoke about that as a group and, and turned the page like, listen, every game now we have to treat this like a playoff game because there's huge implications on the line. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, two big results. Uh, we're hoping we could get another great result in Vancouver um, and then start the playoffs. 
Got to feel good. Uh, the, the crew, the crew went up to Vancouver early this season and got a, a three nil win and three nil win in Concacaf Champions League. Historically, it's been a tough place for LAFC to play, but that result, something you've been part of. Uh, what does that do for your preparations ahead of a team that's played? This is one of their best seasons they've had in a long time. Yeah, they're a talented group, um, and they're having a great season this year. We know that they're going to put up a great fight. Um, we just have to go up there and, and play our game, play our best. I think when we're at our best, we're so hard to stop. Um, and it's a lot of games when, when we're not at our best, we're a little sloppy, um, and we beat ourselves in some of those moments. So um, nothing nothing huge on the docket or huge big things that we have to do, but just play, our, play like ourselves, play our best, and, and we'll be good. Talking to Steve and, and everyone involved when LAFC does well defensively, it's a team effort. It's not just a reflection off the center backs or the goalkeeper or the fullbacks. There was a, a run where the goals weren't coming. We got a, a clean sheet against St. Louis, a clean sheet against Philadelphia. And overall, this last stretch, I believe it's four goals allowed in six. It's been a good defensive effort for LAFC, but you've been a, a new part of that. How has it been? How has it been the process of making it work where you feel like you're one of the toughest crews to get scored upon? Defensively, it's it's always just a pride thing, right? It's always um, how how much frustration can we cause this team? They're going to throw everything at us. They're going to throw different formations. Um, their best players, can we frustrate them? How long can we keep them at a zero? And um, another thing that we speak about is our attackers are so good. They're just so good, right? So if we can hold this team to a zero, what are the chances we're going to win the game? Pretty high. Like, we're, we're hard to stop um, in terms of our attack. So um, defensively, we know that in the back of our mind. Uh, we have to do whatever we can to keep these zeros, keep these shutouts. Um, score first. I think our, our record when we score first is, is amazing. Um, so it's just something that we, we have to keep in the back of our mind. It's so important. Keep these shutouts for not only ourselves and our pride as defenders, right, but for the group. It's huge. Through the season, several guys have played specifically as, as central defenders. You have played with Daniil. You've played with Giorgio, Jesus. The last couple games, you, Jesus, and Giorgio have rotated. What is, you know, in many cases, there's two center backs, maybe a third that play the majority of the games. What's it been like to play with these different guys, very different players in what they bring, and what it's uh, done to your game? Yeah, it's. Um, I think the four of us have a great understanding. Uh, that adaptability is to who we're playing against um, in, in terms of the team and what our tactics are on the day, but also who we're playing with, what are their strengths, what are Giorgio's strengths and weaknesses versus uh, Moody's or Daniil's, right? Everyone's everyone's a little bit of a different player, so um, just keeps your brain moving at a, at a different rate, things to think about um, on the pitch, off the pitch, um, going into certain weeks. So it's been great, but the, the understanding between the four of us is, is amazing, no matter which, which two are out there. And again, like I said earlier, the, the fact that all four of us have played so many games no matter who his number's called or if someone goes down or whatever the case is in the playoffs, I think we're, we're set up for success there. It's been a, an incredible season, uh, as we mentioned all the games. I want to go back to the CONCACAF Champions League because um, you're used to, you put yourself, you're a very brave defender. You put yourself in, in the line of fire in many ways, which you did in the second leg against Leon. And the big head clash with uh, Lucas Romero, I believe his name was, with Leon. What recollection do you have of that play and what you saw immediately thereafter? To nothing, to be honest. I um, I remember the ball spinning out and it and it kind of floating there, and me on my way to to head the ball to try to score, and then I have nothing, no recollection. Uh, and I think my next uh, memory coming to was probably like f like six or seven minutes in the locker room. Oh, wow. Um, and they're stitching me up, and they asked me what the score of the game was, uh, and I said zero zero, and it was one zero at the time. We were losing. And they all looked at each other like, no. And I was like, what's the score? Uh, it was just like a big ordeal. I mean, I was definitely concussed, right? So, yeah, um, uh, yeah no memory of that moment. Big gash. Um, went through concussion protocol. Took, I think I took two weeks off. Um, made sure the brain was right. Made sure the body was right. And then back at it. There's a photo online of your, your gash. And I'm looking at it now. I... It's. I don't see anything. Oh, don't be nice, dude. It's there. I know it's Let me there. Let the camera, dude. Harry I Potter. Know. Turn this way. I know. Humpty Dumpty. I've heard them all it in the locker really room. They're they're ripping me in there. Frankenstein. Come on, guys. I've I've heard them all. Mark, it looks really good, doesn't it? I mean, that's the kind of thing that you walk around. Like, <laughs> Off camera, like he was like this. Ah, you're like, I don't you're Indiana, know. Ah. You're Indiana Jones. You're like, yeah, look at that. Uh, what, what's it? it, it I, I've seen you play for so many years, and injuries are going to be a part of it, yeah. especially the way you play. Um, how Does that discourage you at all, or how do you stay – let me rephrase that. How do you stay as physical and as, as active as you are as a central defender? 
I think I think it's I think it's who you are as a defender. You know, I think it's it's not something that can change you or you're ever going to be able to to turn on or off. Um, like I have the same scar on this side from from two years ago. Oh, in Montreal, I got it. It's not imagine getting this one and then being hesitant in moments to to put my head where it needs to go. Like it's that's just not you can't play the game like that. Yeah. So it's I mean maybe it's not like that for everyone, but for me it's very easy. Like. Um, live and learn and forget it and and the next time whenever i'm ready to play which was i think two three weeks later it was um, no more thinking about it all i think I had to bandage it up just to make sure it didn't split open again but there was no second guessing headers or you know i hope i don't get hit here it, it can never be that type of mentality otherwise bad things will happen that's great that's a really way a good way to call it yeah um you know how many stitches you've had in your career uh this one was 18 i think and this one was like 14 15. this one was montreal this was uh Leon BMO Stadium. So we call this Leon in Montreal. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I don't think I've had any other ones, to be honest with you. Oh, oh I guess on the Achilles, but I don't that's know. Right. If those that was—is that your worst in the Achilles? Because that obviously kept you out a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely the worst. I mean, a, a little. Uh, I mean, brain injuries are, are serious and they're dangerous. But again, yeah. it was it was a, a minor concussion, so uh, the Achilles for me is is definitely the the worst one. Uh, what is the challenge is that obviously not being able to move I mean everybody if you think of Achilles it's there in the back and go you can't you're stuck right yeah I mean everyone it's actually funny you bring that up everyone everyone it's not attacks, funny I bring it up but just was like everyone next, attacks rehabs differently right yeah. you see Aaron Rodgers right now throwing yeah. spirals on the field he says he's coming back he this says he's year. coming back this year and and I mean if he can do it power to him um, but everyone attacks rehabs differently right and I I set a goal I wanted to make it to the World Cup I had a, a timeline in place from me, my trainers, um, the medical staff. Like it was, we were all on the same page. We attacked it a certain way, and um, luckily, it was a very smooth rehab, and, and there was no setbacks, and it was great. So, um, but yeah, every everyone has their own timelines and their own way of looking at things, and you just gotta kind of kind of roll with it. That's incredible that you did make the World Cup. Yeah, you made the World Cup. I mean, what were those discussions like with? If you if you could we could delve into that a little bit about uh, coming back from that how closer you are and how they were able to see you making those steps towards being fully healthy. Yeah, I think um, I was called into a couple camps to help with the rehab originally with the national team, uh, and some of the trainers could could get their hands on me, get their eyes on me, and and see what areas um, I should rehab a little bit more or what areas I was doing really well at. Um, and then it just went into to the MLS season last year, um, and, and I had a good season. Um, I was healthy throughout the season, no setbacks again. So uh, from there, it was just like any other selection. Tremendous. And you've been in touch. The U.S. were recording this. They have their October camp. You're still for aspirations to get back in there, obviously be a big part of the national team, and the communication with the national team as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a brotherhood. We're all in contact, whether it's the players, the coaches. Um, everyone stays in contact, and there's a ton of transparency there. Um, again, it's the pinnacle, right? Everyone wants to be on the national team and, and play for that team. So um, we're all on the same page. We're all working towards the same goal. They allowed three goals with no Aaron Long in there. I'm just saying, man. I just <laughs> <laughs> Greg. <laughs> this guy, man. Dude, I, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the Aaron Long campaigner. Hey, you mentioned uh, um, Aaron Rodgers. Are you in this uh, fantasy football league? Oh, I am smack in the middle of it, dude. Of Does that course. Mean you're Two and two or something? Are you? Uh, are we, you don't I don't have to tell me. We probably keep this. Top I secret. think I'm four and two right now. Oh my records four and two. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely one of the, I don't know, the big GMs in the locker room. You know, trying to make some trades, stir stir the pot a little bit, uh, talk some shit. Definitely, <laughs> uh, I love it. I live for it. So, but the the group is great. Uh, there's 12 of us in there. A ton of the players. Is there a waiting list to get in there? Uh, no, not what you'd think. But I don't think there's as many. Like I think. Most other teams I've been on, there's a lot of American guys and, and a few foreigners that you can kind of pick up. But um, here in this locker room, there's there's a great mix of guys. It's uh, new guys, old guys, foreigners, Americans. Like it's it's a great group. Are the Americans dominating fantasy football, or is that another surprise? Um, no, it's it's pretty mixed, man. It's pretty wow. Mixed. Carlos getting... Vela, great team, great. Carlos Vela, amazing GM, amazing team. Um, this guy <laughs> sends out trades every night. A lot of what? Them, a lot of them are bogus. They're, a lot of them are terrible. He'll like send his two worst players. For I your send best like player. maybe one trade a season, and uh, he's sending it every night. I mean, I mean, multiple trades a week to to multiple GMs. Like, listen. So he's like, Carlos, Christian. Hey, I know you have Christian McCaffrey. Would you be interested in? No, no, no. Aaron Rodgers. He's no. coming back in a couple of weeks. It's something like that. Yeah, but he's he's hilarious. He loves it. Um, and, and he like what an addition, dude. And he, he's amazing.
Excited for the playoffs? Which playoffs? Our I mean, playoffs. MLS Cup playoffs. Uh, yeah. That was a quick transition. That was, that was a quick like transition for football because I was wrapping up here. Yeah, but of that course. Is, this, is a, this is a fun time for you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's get serious now. Come on. We're talking about the playoffs. But You know what they're going to clip off? They clip off things. They're going to clip off Carlos Vela as a great GM. I guarantee you. <laughs> Good. He is. <laughs> Fantastic, dude. <laughs> Fantastic. He's an absolute hustler. So, um, But, yeah, ex- excited for the playoffs. Um, this is what we train for all year. This is when... This is when teams find out what they're made of. This is what players want. This is what coaches want. This is what teams want. So um, as we as we turn the corner now into this part of our season, everyone's excited. Um, and everyone's honestly rearing to go with this little bit of a break, of this little bit of a, a down in the schedule. It's it's the perfect reset for us, and, and we're ready to go. And you came to LAFC to win titles. Absolutely. And this is it for the MLS Absolutely. Cup. Absolutely. For Aaron Long. Aaron, uh, always great to catch up with you. Uh, thanks for sharing news about the two scars. Yeah. Um, I'm glad we got to bring them in there as well. Uh, but he's healthy. LAFC looking good. Defense, offense. And we're all getting ready for Vancouver over the weekend and the playoffs coming up very soon. We'll give you all the details on that here inside LAFC. Podcast, rate, review, download, subscribe. Do you want to say goodbye really quick? Bye, guys. Thanks for everything. Ah, goodbye. Goodbye.